Hey, in this video, I want to show you how to create a quick and simple TypeScript library with good defaults in 2025. I'll create the library in a way that it works well in different environments, such as the browser, node based runtimes, but also, also other JavaScript based runtimes, such as Bun or Workerd or you name it. So, in order to create a TypeScript library, the first thing we need is a folder. So we create a, a project folder and we call this best lib ever. And then we navigate into the folder uh, right away and we open our code editor in this environment. All right, cool. Uh, this folder is completely empty. So we need a package.json file. We can create one by running npm init y. And we also need a, a TypeScript configuration, we can generate that with TSC in it. And then we also need some library code. The standard here is to have a source directory, and then we have three types of files. We typically have entry files into our library that we can call index.ts or whatever other name. We have normal modules that simply import and export some code, and we have files that we use during development, but that shouldn't be included in what we publish to NPM. So let's create an entry file, index.ts, a normal module that we call a.ts, and then a test file that we call index.test.ts. We're not actually gonna be writing tests, but I think it's good if you see how to include these files that we wanna ignore for the publishing of our package. So here we, in the a.ts file, we simply wanna export a const called x with a value of five. And then in our entry point for our library, we wanna just export a function. Uh, we call this function add five. And the important thing is we import from this module. And this simple code contains about 95% of the cases you see in the wild. Uh, it is all just importing from some modules and then making them accessible through these entry points to your library. All right, we're off to a pretty good start, but we have some boilerplate left. Uh, one thing we have left is to define a git ignore file. And this is simply some standard boilerplate stuff, but good defaults is to include the node modules as well as your directory that contains your final transpiled code. All right, with this out of the way, we can look at our TypeScript configuration. Our TypeScript configuration determines how a project is built, but it also determines how things like linting or other TypeScript related features uh, work for your project. Here we wanna make a couple of changes. First, we wanna change the target to a newer version of JavaScript, because I think in 2025, we can do better than ES 2016. We wanna change the module system to ES next. And we wanna emit declarations. That means we want our final emitted code to contain TypeScript files as well, like definition files, so other consumers of our library have type linting and autocomplete support. Um, another thing we want is we want to set the out dir. This determines where our transpiled code lives. And I think these are all the changes we need for now. So we can move on to our package.json file. And one setting we can change here is to include the dist folder in our files array. And the files array simply determines what files will be published to NPM. Typically, we don't include our TypeScript files in what we publish to NPM. We only include the final build output. Next, we need three dependencies. Um, I'm using pnpm here, but you can use uh, npm or yarn. The commands are typically the same. pnpm install, and we need TypeScript. We need a uh, rim ref, and we need tsc alias. 
All right, and we need these dependencies for some scripts we're gonna define. And the first script we're gonna define is a clean script. And the clean script uses rim ref and it simply deletes our dist folder. The next script we wanna define is a build script and the build script runs our clean script. And after it is done running our clean script, it'll run TSC. All right, uh, what is happening here? So the TypeScript compiler, when it takes our TypeScript code and compiles it to JavaScript, it has no means of, of figuring out if there are some files that have been deleted between compilation steps. So if you don't delete the dist folder before building, you will have old files lingering around the dist folder until you delete the folder uh, because they have just been uh, deleted um, while you were developing your code. So it's good practice to delete the disk folder before you build it. Cool. And I think with this config in place, we can give building our library the first time a try. And we can do this by simply running pnpm run build. All right, and this worked. So what do we see in the output? We see in the output that for every TypeScript file we have, a JavaScript file was created, which is already great, right? Which is exactly what we wanted. So here we can see the code was uh, the code was correctly transpiled from TypeScript to JavaScript. We have the imports that, that are working. We have the type definitions that are working, which is also super great. Um, but we also see that we have a couple of problems. As I mentioned before, we have these test files here in our final build output uh, but i talked about that we don't want our test files in the final output it makes no sense to transpile our tests we can run our tests natively in typescript we don't need them here in the dist folder so this is one problem we have to address the other problem is a bit more subtle and it relates to how module resolution works in javascript so there are a lot of runtimes where this code is completely fine and it will run just fine. This includes the browser, this includes runtimes like bun, but especially in node server environments that run their code with node, uh, this will cause problems because node implemented ES modules in a way that it requires file extensions. So this won't work. In order for this to work, you need this. Uh, you need to import with a file extension defined. Um, and in order for your code to work in node runtimes or for consumers that use node, you need to have file extensions in your final build output. All right, so we have these two problems. We need to exclude the test file and we also need to generate file extensions during the build so our library works with consumers that use node. Let's tackle these problems in order. So first, let's tackle the test files. And for the test files, we'll create a separate tsconfig file that we call tsconfig.production.json. And here we extend our base config. And we simply exclude um, we simply exclude all files that have a test.ts to them. All right. So here we created a separate tsconfig file that takes all the configuration objects uh, from our base config, but just excludes certain files, in this case, the test files. And when we transpile a code, we can configure TSC to not use the default tsconfig, but to use our tsconfig.production.json. And this should get rid of our problem with the test files here. Let's give this a go. All right, great, this worked. Now we have a tsconfig.production that excludes certain files from our final output. On to the next problem. The next problem is here the file extensions. And for this, we can use TS alias. And TS alias is a tool that can do a whole lot, but we can specifically use it to add the file extensions 
after we transpiled our code. And for this, to our tsconfig.production file, we add the ts alias command resolve full pass to true. And then after we build our TypeScript project, we run tsc alias and we run it also with the tsconfig.production.json. All right, great. So what do we expect? We expect when we run this code that um, the file extensions here will go from import x from a to import x from a.js. Let's give this a go. All right, cool. So we got rid of the second problem we had. So with these small changes, we're about 99% done with our work. The last thing we have to do is to point our library to the correct entry points. And in order for this to work with modern standards, uh, we can get rid of the main property here and exchange it for the exports property. And we're gonna keep it simple and simply point all consumers of a library to our entry point here. For this, we're gonna choose a default value of the disk folder and then the index.js file. And we're gonna point the types to dist.index.d.ts. All right, great. This basically means when a consumer installs our library that all they can import is what is exported from this index file here. And this gets us over the finish line. With this, we have a pretty good default in place that we can publish to NPM and that other consumers, no matter which runtime they're on, if they're on Node, if they're on Bun, if they're using a browser environment, can install. The only choices we made are that our consumers need to have somewhat of a modern environment. So a node version that supports ES modules and a client that is able to support ES 2020, but this should be fine for all modern consumers in 2025. Great, so the, the very, very last step we can do is publish a library to NPM. And for this, you can simply run NPM login this will log you into NPM. And the next thing you can do is NPM publish. I would love to show you how this works in this video, but NPM has a filter for spammy packages that have no content. Uh, so I won't be able to publish it here. Um, but as soon as you have a library that has a bit more content than one function uh, and one constant, uh, you can publish it uh, without being marked as spam. Cool. I hope you had fun watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, pressing the like button helps me a lot and see you next time.